This video was made possible by my Diamond Level Patron, Nissa Phillips. You can commission your very own video over on my Patreon. In the second half of the 2010s, the media landscape was taken by storm when a controversial new movie was released, serving as the origin of an iconic movie sociopath on par with the legendary Hannibal Lecter. The film is a deeply disturbing tale of stalking, hallucinations and mental illness, filled with social commentary about the state of the world and the American healthcare system. It's an incredible movie anchored by an incredible actor fleshing out one of cinema's greatest villains. That movie is of course, 2015 Stalked by My Doctor, which chronicles the deeply disturbed cardiologist Dr. Albert Beck as he stalks his teenage patient Sophie Green, desperate to form a relationship with her. Movies have tried again and again to create memorable villains, but what's so different about this one? Well, get ready because the Doctor is in. This is why Dr. Albert Beck is the greatest movie sociopath. Dr. Albert Beck is a truly fascinating character played magnificently by Eric Roberts. Beck is a sex-obsessed cardiologist who suffers from a huge Jekyll and Hyde complex. One minute he's a talented, caring and dedicated surgeon who can almost miraculously save lives, one of the best cardiologists in the entire world. But then the next minute he suddenly switches to an absolutely callous and ruthless maniac. A prime example of this duality is Beck's date with an interested woman he met online. It all seems to be going well, until he suddenly comes on really strong and outlines an entire future with her, detailing their life together in Mexico and how she'll quit her job just to be with him and raise their children, even though they only met four hours ago. It's the perfect scene to show how deranged and clueless Beck is when it comes to people. He has absolutely no idea how relationships work and expects everything to come immediately. So when she rightfully turns him down and tells him he needs professional help, he completely freaks out and makes a scene. He's so insecure and thin-skinned that he chases her out, insulting her, desperately trying to make it seem like he never wanted her anyway and acting like he's the one ending the day instead of her, since he has such a fragile ego. I'm unfriending you. We introduced to Beck at a low and unstable point in his life, being stood up by his date, immediately showing his desperation for control. He's a sociopath, and not being in control is the absolute worst situation he can find himself in. This sends him into freefall, and speeding his car is a personification for his lack of control, because his mental state is spiraling out of control. He's deeply unhinged and easily angered which we see constantly as he completely melts down any time something in his life goes slightly wrong. He can't handle the smallest bit of criticism or negativity. He lives in a glass house so to speak, and his obsession with control easily leads to failure. Beck may be an immensely talented doctor with so much talent and success, but he is absolutely useless at romancing, with his failures driving him to the point of insanity. He is obsessed with dating, even letting it consume his daily life as he scrolls through online dating websites during work. He has a deeply unhealthy desperation to form a relationship because he believes he has the right to one. He's entitled to women, turning to anger and self-loathing whenever he's rejected. He views women as objects, which is a strong hint towards him being sociopathic because he has such a lack of empathy. He views himself as the most important person in the world and never learns from his mistakes, instead blaming others, especially women who don't return his heavy-handed feelings. He hates women because he can't get them, and he hates men who can, which we see in this movie as he develops a particular hatred for Ryan, the boyfriend of Sophie, the subject of Beck's obsession. Sophie Green is a normal high school senior with a stable family life and good prospects, having recently been accepted into college to study medicine. She's presented as a very typical teenager with a close circle of friends, so it's easy to relate to her and want her to succeed in her medical studies. But her life changes forever as her talented footballer boyfriend Ryan is texting and driving, crashing the car and severely injuring Sophie, whose broken ribs might rupture her heart if she isn't operated on immediately. Well, luckily for her, she's saved. But unluckily for her, her saviour is the top heart surgeon Dr. Albert Beck. Sophie understandably begins the narrative as very naive because she's been sheltered by a good family life, so she just thinks Beck is a caring doctor. It's easy to sympathise with her and put yourself in her shoes, which is what makes her story so scary because you can see it happening to anyone. 
She can't be blamed for anything that happens since she's so normal and she's the unfortunate victim of everything escalating around her. Sophie doesn't even understand her mother's suspicions at first, because we're always taught to trust doctors. She simply reacts in the way any of us would react, thinking we're just imagining things when this doctor starts to seem a little bit too friendly. The premise of Stalked by My Doctor is very realistic and believable, everything spiralling out of control after a doctor falls for their patient. Doctors have a lot of power and we're raised to trust them implicitly, which is why it's terrifying to imagine a doctor abusing their power to become closer to a patient, manipulating them and forcing their way into the patient's life. This is exactly what Beck does. Since Sophie is essentially a captive at first, she has no escape as his grooming begins, because she's recovering from a major surgery, relying on the hospital staff and Beck himself, since she can't function without them yet. Hospitals are such safe settings, a place of healing and protection, but this movie inverts that sense of safety to remind you of how dangerous the world really is. Hospitals may be safe, but you're also completely helpless while you're a patient. You're dependent on others, which is actually incredibly dark and unsettling when it's taken to its logical extreme in this movie. Beck is able to take advantage of Sophie within the comfort and legal confines of his workplace, with no way for her to distance herself from him until she's discharged. It's truly horrifying and grounds the narrative in reality. Beck is a man with power, which is already dangerous enough, but what makes it worse is how easily he can get away with his questionable behaviour. He's well respected and the best in his field, so his colleagues have no idea what he's really like, or how deeply evil he actually is. Like most sociopaths, he's charming and charismatic, able to manipulate others and hide in plain sight. This makes it the scariest movie you might ever watch. Seeing how these dominoes fall, Beck immediately enraptured by this helpless teenager relying on his care and doing literally anything to try and make her his bride. Her age plays a big part in his obsession. Unlike the women who have rejected Beck, Sophie is young and fertile, but not fully independent, so he sees her as the perfect bride, someone he can control and manipulate rather than someone with the willpower and independence to escape him. So it's easy to see why someone as twisted as Beck would develop this unhealthy obsession with Sophie. Much like his feelings of entitlement towards relationships, Beck also seems to believe Sophie owes him for saving her life, despite that literally being his job and legal obligation. He thinks this care for her gives him the right to date her or be involved in her life, despite her being his patient and he's stalking and harassing her against her will. He sees this all as his big opportunity to get her to fall in love with him, since she's forced to remain in one place and interact with him regularly. And an important distinction the movie makes is that Beck knows exactly what he's doing. He knows it's wrong. This isn't some innocent crush or fantasy. He straight up admits to Sophie's dad that he would lose his job if he was trying to form a relationship with his patient, because it's an abuse of the power he has as a doctor. It makes everything even worse because he's purposefully doing all of this. He's just that twisted. Beck clearly has a lot of deep-rooted psychological issues going beyond his nature as a sociopath. He often behaves like a child with how he pursues Sophie, something even she notices. It's like he's a middle schooler and he wants me to help him lose his virginity. There's clearly something wrong with him mentally, with some areas seemingly undeveloped, but that doesn't excuse any of his behaviour, because he's clearly developed enough to have become a talented, world-class medical professional, yet he chases after this innocent teenage girl as if he's the same age as her, something that continues to frame his actions as deeply disturbing and unhinged. Beck's obsession only escalates throughout the film. He becomes more and more desperate to seduce her, which leads to him following her around so he can accidentally bump into her and weasel his way into her everyday life. One of the most vile and extreme acts is breaking into Sophie's house while she and her mother are out. He sneaks into her room and fantasizes about having sex with her in her bed. It's truly disgusting and opens a frightening window into the delusions of this unhinged monster. He has no grip on reality, something that slips further and further, constantly having these hallucinations, including physically pretending to eat dinner with her as she expresses her wishes to escape her parents and live with him instead. These kinds of delusions only get worse throughout the series as he eventually begins to hallucinate a different version of himself to argue with. Stalked by my doctor is basically what Joker failed to do. It puts you in the mind of this despicable, crazed villain. It doesn't try to create sympathy for him, but it shows you his twisted perspective so you can understand 
understand why he does what he does, and C how he desperately tries to rationalise and justify his selfish and disturbing actions. He's deeply unhinged, and the film does a fantastic job at showing the depth of his pain and loneliness, which he blames on others. This is a key feature of Albert Beck. He always pushes the blame onto anyone else he can, whether that be push his own agenda or disguise his true plans. We see this when Sophie's father confronts him. Beck masterfully shifts the blame onto her, using her innocent thank you gift and letter as evidence that she's the one obsessed with him. It's pure sociopathic behaviour once again proving he knows exactly what he's doing and the risks he's taking, but still never realising he shouldn't actually be doing it in the first place. He's a very troubled man, the narrative consistently showing the severely unethical ways he's handling his emotions and his loneliness. Despite Sophie showing absolutely no indication of sharing Beck's feelings, he becomes very possessive of her and continues to escalate things to keep her close to him. Any time she seems to be slipping from his grasp, he engineers some kind of crisis, something shown as he sneaks penicillin into her mother's medication to give her a fatal allergic reaction, since she was onto him and protecting Sophie from his advances. It truly shows just how unhinged Beck is. He's willing to commit actual murder just to force his way into a relationship with his unwilling teenage girl. He has absolutely no moral compass because he's so selfish. When that plan fails and pushes Sophie even further away, he escalates escalates things further yet again, kidnapping her and faking her death by abusing his hospital access to alter records and stealing a similar body to burn beyond recognition. It perfectly shows how absolutely delusional yet dangerously intelligent he is. He's completely lost to his insanity, but he still wields great power and influence, which makes him a truly terrifying villain. Eric Roberts completely immerses himself in the role of Albert Beck turning it into one of his greatest ever roles with a masterfully vivid performance. Beck is utterly relentless and terrifying, an unforgivable antagonist. He has deep-rooted narcissism and an inflated ego since he knows how talented he is. He is one of the best heart surgeons in the entire world and he's well aware of that, providing him with such hateable arrogance. Beck's personality is incredibly detestable and he reminds Sophie of the power he wills. As a surgeon, he saved her life and with those same skills, he can just as easily take it. At the end of the film, his frustrations and failures reach a breaking point, so he completely snaps and decides the only way to make Sophie love him is to literally dismember her by cutting off her arms and legs so she has no choice but to rely on him again, just like she did after the surgery. It's deeply horrific and evil. This man is completely insane insane, and he will go to any lengths to get what he wants. This is all his twisted sense of romance. He somehow thinks that after all of this, she will reciprocate his love. He kidnaps her and plans to escape to Mexico with her as his captive bride, seeming to think that she will suddenly love him because of Stockholm Syndrome. Beck lives in his own delusional world and it shows, since everyone else can immediately see what he's trying to do. The movie focuses on the importance of family and friends, because Sophie's support network tries again and again to save her. The vastly different reactions of her parents are illuminating. At first, they're just thankful their daughter is still alive, willing to overlook the unconventional behaviour of Dr. Beck, since he seems harmlessly sweet and caring. However, when Sophie has hazy recollections of him kissing her when she was unconscious, the alarm bells obviously go off that there's something not right. But whilst her mother is suspicious, Sophie's father remains surprisingly nonchalant, simply chalking everything up to that aid old adage, guys will be guys. This isn't because he's secretly involved or part of Beck's plan, it's instead a way to show the deeply ingrained victim blaming culture and sexism within the system, because these serious concerns are hand waved away so dismissively. It takes further escalating stalking and questionable behaviour for Sophie's father to even begin to think Beck is suspicious, but he's still too concerned about what it would do to the doctor's reputation to file any charges or voice proper concerns. Concerns. It's a deep piece of cutting social commentary, how even after all of this intense stalking and disgusting behaviour, people will still defend a predator. There will always be people who try to excuse or defend someone like Albert Beck, despite all the evidence and proof of their disturbing crimes and intentions. Albert Beck is an incel 
plain and simple. He has an entitlement to women, frustrated that he can't attain a relationship despite longing for one. This means he views Ryan as the biggest obstacle, because he's jealous of the younger man being in a relationship with the object of his desire. Especially after he does an R. Kelly impression getting trapped in the closet and watching the couple get freaky. This cements Beck's jealousy of his perceived rival, so he decides to break the couple up, stealing Ryan's phone and sending a text to his friend saying Sophie's scars are ugly. In the twisted mind of Albert Beck, this is a foolproof plan, because Sophie believes the ruse, but his complete lack of common sense and his desperation to remove Ryan is actually part of his ultimate downfall. It takes almost no effort or investigation for Ryan to realise what actually happened. When he confronts Beck, the Doctor throws his walking stick away and hurts his leg further. It shows how Beck never thinks in the long term. He wants immediate results and never thinks about the consequences of his actions or his plans. He sees this as a solution to get Ryan off his back so he can have Sophie all to himself, but it instead adds another car to the shaky house of cars Beck has built over the course of the movie. Rather than getting rid of Ryan, it actually confirms his suspicion about the Doctor. He once again tries to turn things back against his accusers, framing Ryan as an attacker, but he never realises just how easily people can disprove his lies and fake stories, like when Ryan immediately notices that the supposed body of Sophie is wearing the wrong ring. Beck begins to slip up and become more desperate and frantic, this search for immediate results exposing his own stalking as he buys Sophie the exact kind of doll she collects, which in turn cements Sophie and her family suspicions of him. He simply doesn't understand how the average person functions, because he lacks empathy so much he can't see the world for what it is. He is absolutely lost in his delusions. The more Sophie evades him, the more unhinged he becomes, letting the obsession consume him as he gets more violent and volatile with his outbursts at his constant failure, because the concept of no doesn't exist in his narrow, selfish mind. This is ultimately how Sophie manages to overcome the monstrous Doctor. At first, she tries to play along and give him what he wants so he'll let her out of her restraints and she can escape. Even though it doesn't work, finally giving him what he is lusted for changes the balance of power for even a brief second, which is all it takes for her to completely break him mentally by simply saying she hates him. This whole time, he has been so desperate for her, longing for embrace and reciprocation, refusing to even think she didn't want him. He has wanted her validation, and he is so lost within his hallucinations and obsession that finding out she doesn't want him sends him completely off balance. He has such a simplistic worldview that his entire ego shatters and sends him into meltdown. Sophie didn't physically escape during this interaction, but she almost unknowingly gained the upper hand mentally. Earlier it was made clear how Beck can't handle rejection. It sends him into a blind rage of violence and self-loathing. So by unknowingly taking advantage of this weakness, Sophie accidentally breaks his domination enough for him to leave her alone just long enough for her to break her restraints. It's a genius way for the protagonist to overcome this seemingly unstoppable monster, ending the narrative in a positive way. The funeral scene is actually very symbolic, since this is the death of the innocent, naive Sophie. She has been hardened by these horrific events and has managed to escape against all odds, but she'll never be the same again. So this is essentially her rebirth as a survivor, with her support network there to help her through the difficult years to come. However, with a character as delightfully evil and memorable as Albert Beck, you can't just restrict his story to a single movie. Indeed, even after Sophie battered him with a golf club to make her escape, there's a chilling realisation as the cops raid his huge house, only to find that he has completely vanished, because he's escaped to Mexico to start a new life and find new victims. And much like Sophie, he has changed. He has learned from her escape and the challenge posed by her family, so when Dr Albert Beck strikes again, it's obvious that he'll be more dangerous than ever. Stalked by My Doctor is a masterpiece of modern cinema. It's not a movie about the person being stalked, it instead takes the unconventional approach of being about the stalker. Albert Beck is the villain is the character we follow whether we like it or not. This is an inspired and genius decision by writer and director Doug Campbell, because it focuses on the most interesting and well-acted character in the movie. The rest of the cast are wisely kept out of the way, so Eric Roberts can chew the scenery with his incredible, groundbreaking performance as the unforgettable Dr Albert Beck. Beck is one of the most terrifying and powerful villains to ever 
grace the big screen. And this movie does the perfect job diving into his character and showing you how delusional and twisted this man is, giving you an unsettling look at the world through his eyes as he desperately tries to form a relationship with the unwilling teen Sophie. Many movies have tried to create an iconic, disturbing sociopath, but few even come close to Stalked by My Doctor, which effortlessly introduces the most chilling of them all. And despite this minor setback, his journey has only just begun. And I'd like to give an extra special thank you to my diamond level patron Fallon Cortez and all my gold level patrons Calvin, Daniel Shilato, Franz Horn aka Lone Vortex, Herner Verzog, and Luke underscore SY. Thank you so much for all the support.